ready for fall. Me, me. It's 100 degrees outside and I'm over it. Welcome to the vlog, everyone. As you can see, I am holding last week's mug. I am drinking coffee out of it and thoroughly enjoying it. And just so you know, everything does taste better coming out of a themed mug. <laughs> it's a proven fact. This week, I did want to go over just a couple things. I did get a mic. This is one of those wireless mics. I did get some feedback that I needed to work on the sound quality. So I do appreciate that feedback. And if you could just let me know in the comment section if this mic is doing better, if you liked it before, just kind of let me know if this is a good one or not. So because I'm a decorator and because it's fall, I'm super excited and I am starting to do all the decor, all the fun like holiday themed decors. So this week, we're going to work on fall decor for your mantle or your table, any kind of tablescape actually. So you could use the same decor on your dining table or you could use it on an entryway table, um, any kind of tablescape. The only issue would be depth. So um, you would have to rearrange some items if you had like a super narrow uh, fireplace. But other than that, this design will be able to be carried out throughout your home. All of these pieces that I selected were from the at home store and all of the pumpkins right now that are in this design are 25% off. At the end of the video, I will go over everything and kind of zoom in and let you see. I do have all the tags on it so you can see what price it is and if it's something that you would like to buy. I also wanted to give you a little feedback on fall decor this year. The trends this year for fall decor are very muted. Instead of like the bright oranges, it is in bright oranges and you know brighter yellows, it is more muted. So everything that I have in this display is a more muted version, which I'm in love with. It is really gorgeous. And you can also do all whites. Whites and creams are a big look. So you could just get varying textures and everything um, in the same monochromatic look. Or they even have like a very organic look. So you could go that route where you got, um, I believe it was Target even had like a, a little pumpkin that was made of what it looked like twigs bent up into a pumpkin. One of the ones that I have today is very textured. And another one I have is wood. So they're going with those very earthy, very muted colors or monochromatic colors. And also I saw that they're trying to throw in some blue, which as you can see, and if you've watched me, I am obsessed with the color blue. So that is fantastic for me. If you're ready, let's get started. So here is the cleared off fireplace, as you've seen, I know you've seen this in the rest of my videos, but I wanted to talk to you about how to build any kind of tablescape really, but how to build this one specifically. You want to layer, so by layering, I'm gonna start by layering some art. So I found this piece of art, which I'm going to put here. I wanted to give me a homey feel, so I added a piece, like a photo that I already had. In a perfect world, this would be in a wood color, like a, probably like a rough wood. This is what I already had, so this is what's gonna go up. So we're just gonna go ahead and layer this. And what happens when you layer items, when you're doing uh, tablescapes or any kind of displays, it starts to give you more visual interest. So if I were to not layer this, and just to put that there because I have this whole space to fill, see how it's just, it's lacking and it's missing? When I add this, slightly covering, I don't want you to cover too much of this, and you add, I just create a depth. And even though that's still empty, it doesn't look as empty as it would if this piece was flat. So there is the first step for visual interest. We could slide all that up. So a lot of people, when they go to the store, they purchase, say, two of these, of this same exact size and shape. And what I would, would like you to start doing for all your tablescapes is to purchase like the larger and the medium or the larger, don't go large or small because there's too much of a gap, but do large, medium. And then I don't know if you can really tell in this lighting, but this one's more of a cream and this one's more of a regular white. So just so you can tell, I'm also playing, not only am I playing with heights and layering, I'm also playing with different colors. So let's go ahead and put this up. So again, in the layering, I'm actually going to layer these this way 
not in front of each other, not straight beside each other, but just slightly off. And in playing with texture, I'm going to put these side by side. So on here, I do need a little bit of a gap here. I'm placing this on top instead of a pillar candle. And then I'm also gonna put that one on top. So the different textures, the different colors, it's all working together. And this piece of art, although it's not exactly fall, it gives me autumn vibes, but it, what I loved most was this piece of art could be reusable all year long. I have height on this side, and right now we have no height on this side. So on a piece like this where we're looking for a little more balance, I would suggest putting another piece over here. You could get two more of these candle holders and do the same exact thing, or you could change it up and get a little more texture and a little difference and put this here. And these just came as a pack, one, one size here. Drop that in there and give us a little more texture, a little more visual interest, and in then it's not the same thing, but it's also giving these same heights. So this one's slightly taller, but it's fine. It gives you a visual height balance. The next step I'm gonna do is add the greenery. Now there's all sorts of leaves and different things that you can choose. I actually like these. I feel like they are so much softer. Again, we have these muted colors. So I feel like getting a leaf that looks like this, that has a little bit, it's almost like a, has a texture to it too, but gives it a more muted. It's not this really bright green is going to work best with our other muted colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this. And there's different ways you can secure this and stuff to your mantle. At this point, since it's just a show here and I'm gonna be taking it right back down, I'm not gonna worry about actually adhering it to mine. I have seen a lot of tricks. People use command strips um, because they peel right off and don't leave any residue. I've seen people do that on here. They have little hooks on them and then they stick them. Um, that's one way to keep it from falling. And then I always like to layer with two. I feel like it makes it a little fuller. This to me is okay. This would be great if you have a thinner shelf. Um, but I'm working with a thicker shelf. So I'm gonna add the second layer to give it that little bit of oomph. And when you get this, just kind of fiddle with it. You can have some, whoop, this is why you actually hold it down. But kind of fiddle with it. You can have some intertwine, you can have some drop down. You can have some work itself around your candle holders, just kind of work it in here. And then this is something like as you add to with the other pumpkins and stuff I'm gonna add, you can fiddle with it as you go. So don't panic if it's not doing exactly what you want it to the first time. The next thing I bought, these are so cool, just wooden beads, what I was thinking, and they have like a little tassel on the end. So again, I was going for that earthy tone. I wanted to pull in some more just naturals. So I wanted to take the wood pumpkins that I have, like this guy, he's not the same color, but it's still in that, the wood tone, it's still wood. And I wanted to kind of weight this down with a little bit of wood. So I'm gonna add, I just picked up two of these. So I'm gonna add these to the garland. This is one of those that there's really no correct way to weave this in. I've seen people drape them. I mean, people might even do it over this to give you that wood element. I just wanna carry it all the way across on this. Let's flip this since the tag is on that side. And I just wanna give you little peaks of this wood. And I'm just gonna hide the tag. That's good. Obviously you wouldn't have that problem regularly. So I just want to kind of, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be even. Again, we're going for like a natural look. And when you're doing the natural stuff, think about being outside. Nothing is exact. Nothing is completely symmetrical. Nothing grows at the same rate. So just kind of keep that in mind to get that really earthy feel. Okay, the next thing I have is this pumpkin. Again, it's the same like creams and whites. And this one is just tall and skinny, which I liked. And then I've got another one of these blues. 
because I want to repeat this blue color on this side. Let's see if we can get that tag a little out of the way. Okay, now I'm working with tag, so it is being kind of a problem. But this is another tip when you're building if you have like a, a theme color, so you have this bluish gray over here, you're gonna wanna repeat it on the other side because these items don't exactly match. We just need to pull that color back in so it looks more cohesive as a whole. And then this guy is my showstopper. I love him. So he's gonna go in the center or center-ish. I don't like how he's standing, so I'm just gonna use a book that I had. I'm gonna bury this book underneath the greenery. This is a great way to get height. This is also a great way to get where it's out of balance here. When it sits on the book, it'll be straight. So we're gonna add that. And just kind of hide it. And I've seen people use, instead of books, I've seen people use like styrofoam pieces that they have, you know, out of packaging. I've seen them use that and that works really well. Anything that you can kind of hide back here. This book is probably a little too big, but I don't have a second story, so no one's gonna be looking from the top down. So we'll put that there. And then again, I got another off-white creamish gourd, but I got it in a different style. So that guy will go over here, kind of help that book a little too and then I want to repeat this wood piece that I have on this side again with the same over here so I just want to throw it in over here to give you that wood look and don't be afraid to fiddle with this guys it's it's <laughs> The greenery and all this stuff is loose, so you're gonna have to play with it a little bit. Okay, and then I have two of these, same off-white. These have a twine added to them, so I'm gonna go ahead and add these in just for color. And this one, as you can see, there's usually a design in threes. That's another tip. Your grouping should be like one, three, five, so for this one, I only have two over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip this guy in here to give you that third. And if you have to adjust to hold it, do so. Make sure you do the little tweaks. And honestly, as you go about, like this is something you may tweak a few times as you go through. Through the days, you'll just go by it and notice something so you can tweak it. But this guy, would sit much better if I didn't have the tag. You could put him more like this, which I like that better, but I don't like the tag showing to y'all. So, actually, you know what? This one's tag fell off, so we'll just put him up here, and then that allows me to do whatever I want with this guy, and that's what I like. So here is your mantle display. So I love all the elements. I love how they come together. See how we have the blues and grays, and then we have the creams. And not everything matches, but it ties together beautifully. Have fun, get different textures, different shapes, especially in pumpkin season because there's gourds. And I actually even saw some really cute acorns that I considered picking up, but I put them back at it. I didn't want this to become too busy. I want this to be something that you guys can recreate at home with no issue. So have fun. Just enjoy the decor. And this is the final product. I'll get some close-up shots of it. And then I'm actually gonna move this over to the dining table and show you how to do this at the dining table as well.
so I think this is gonna be our best view, not of me, but of the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pieces that I used over there. The only ones I did not bring over, I did not bring over the picture, the wall art or the picture that I had at the house um, because of course I don't want those to sit down. I could actually bring the, the wall art is canvas so I definitely won't bring it over. I don't wanna see anything on it. The picture I actually could put on the table and kind of decorate around it. But since we're just going off of the pieces that we used, bought it at home, I'm just gonna use those. So one of the other tips I don't believe I shared is I bought everything in twos. I only used one of these during the initial design, but I do have a second one of these. I always buy in twos. That way I know if I need that height or that balance, I have it uh, in the same piece. So the only thing I didn't do that in is a tall piece here, the base. Those were still colors. I had color and texture and height in mind when I did that, but everything else came in twos. So let's get started. So for here, I just laid the garland down. I would just run it across your table. And then this, I would center up. It's my tallest piece. So I'm gonna center it up here. And you can have these like twist, kind of incorporate the stuff that we're gonna do. This is always a good look. I don't, I didn't measure these. You can do that as well if you're an exact person. Okay, so this is my beginning, and I'm doing this on the fly so you can see how my brain works. Okay, is I'll probably leave these down and just have the one center piece, and then use these pieces to fill in. I'm gonna go grab the other one of this. So I like the way the balance is already on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the exact replica it's the same one. I'm gonna go use it on this end as well. These are gonna be our baseline. And then with these little ends, just tuck them in. And then I still like my beads. I'm gonna add these in after I do all these other pieces. So here, you can go outside of the garland as well. You do not have to play just in the garland. I'm gonna use one of these blue, and then the same thing on this side. I'm gonna do the big white gourd over here. And I'm gonna layer that guy there. Okay. These, I love these. I'm just gonna tilt them both in here. The only thing you have to worry about when you're doing a dining table is it needs to be balanced on both sides because you're gonna have people sitting on this side and you're gonna have people sitting on that side. So you want it to be viewable from both sides. And when you're doing a fireplace, it just has to look good from the front and the side. You don't have to worry about the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is pretty balanced on this back side. And then I also had the wooden pieces. I don't like that at all. I'm gonna do one wooden on each side and one white one on each side. I did not use these this time because I only wanted one focal point. So let me show you what this looks like. So here's the finished look using what we had over there. The only thing I did different was I added one of these that matched the other one. And then I took away the two candlesticks and I took away, of course, the wall art. But here's how you can make this work. And what's really cool about this is this could be your Thanksgiving setup. So say you had it on your mantle all fall, and then you wanted to do this, have a table setting for a Thanksgiving that you're hosting at your house. You could just move the items from your fireplace, arrange it differently like this, just double-sided, and then you have a beautiful centerpiece for Thanksgiving. And you could, I mean, I have pumpkin plates, but you could just use off-white plates, anything to add, add little turkeys to make it look a little more Thanksgiving, or some acorns, and you have a beautiful, beautiful setup. All right. 
right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I gave you some tips that will help you. I will see you all. Have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you all next time. Bye.